people often ask me, what what caused me to start Field Haven? Why did, did we start Field Haven? I've always loved animals. I've always been an animal person. Growing up on a farm in New Jersey, um, we always had a lot of different animals. I was always the cat person. I loved cats from the time I was a small child. And I always wanted to do something for animals. And when I had the opportunity to start Field Haven, it was going to be just something I would do sort of on the side and, and save a few animals. And it just grew and grew. It took, it took hold in the community of Lincoln. I started with um, having a few litters of kittens in the tack room of my horse barn. And then it grew from there to where we moved the shelter into a mobile home that was on our property. It was small and homey. Our med room was probably smaller than the average closet. Things were a little crude then, but wonderful. We have come a long way since then. One of the things I most remember about the trailer is the floors. The floors they had taken, tried to make it less sterile and crummy. They had taken paint and they had just dribbled it all over the floor. It's different colors of paint, which made it kind of uh, festive, you know. And of course, kitties everywhere in a small space that were climbing on everything. And it was just kind of a joy in its own, it had its own personality for sure. We quickly outgrew it and it was time for us to move on. I was here the day we tore it down. Um, it was pretty funny. We, um, we did get a couple people out there with sledgehammers that, that had been there for years that really wanted to put a hole in the walls. Enjoy it! So we began a campaign in 2009, I believe, to raise the funds to build the shelter that we have today, which is absolutely gorgeous. We worked with the University of California, Davis, um, the Correct Shelter Medicine Program to help design the shelter. We had a lot of support from donors to, to um, fund the shelter. It seemed like it took forever until we had the next shelter. And in that interim, we still had cats. and so. We ended up putting them in the very small garage that's here. We ended up making that the shelter. So, so we never stopped working. Uh, we just had to move, um, move situations around. In 2014, we received a call about a home that was greatly overcrowded with a lot of cats that were sick and very unhealthy. We reached out to the homeowner who was very open to getting help. We went to that home and we brought in nearly 60 cats that were in all stages of, from new, very newborn for just a couple of days old to several older cats in all conditions of health. Many of the cats had what's called feline herpes virus, which is an eye disease if left or untreated will um, caused severe infections in the eyes. Many of the cats had very severely infected eyes from the herpes virus. We worked with Dr. Horikawa of Animal Eye Center who provided us guidance and treatment plans for each of the cats. Our volunteers and staff worked around the clock for several months to treat these cats. Only one cat completely lost his vision, and that's Champy. He was completely blind when he came in. And and he, that was his name. She had named him, the woman who had all the cats. That wasn't, you know, these names that they had were not names that we came up with. Champy just had 
you know, great personality, um, and it began to shine through as he got better. Every other cat retained vision in at least one eye. Some cats did lose one eye, but every other cat besides Champy has at least some vision. We were very proud of that and very grateful to Dr. Horikawa for providing that guidance and that medical expertise to us. She also did surgery on several of the cats and we were um, very blessed to have a great surgical suite. And all of the cats have been adopted out into homes now. We have the Second Chance Ranch, which we opened last year. And that is for cats that really have no place else to go, like feral cats, semi-feral cats, cats that have behavior issues that prevent them from being part of a, a family. So the cats that go in, into the Second Chance Ranch are then rehomed in places where they need rodent rangers. Any place that needs rodent control, that's where the rodent rangers can be adopted to. One of our staff people, Jen, is the one that pretty well determines, um, interviews people to determine which is the best barn uh, program for them. We also, at the Second Chance Ranch, determine if they're tame or feral. This one was tame, and her name is Karma. And when she first came here to Buck's Barn inside the Second Chance Ranch, the volunteers said she will tear your face off. But look at her now. And that's because this is a quiet, calm area with very large spaces for cats, so we can determine if they're going to be tame or feral. A lot of the feral cats here are were from a garbage dump or a situation where somebody was harming or harassing them. We get them spayed and neutered, and then we adopt them out as barn cats. And we use Alley Cat Allies protocol for adopting out feral cats. You really never, ever want to relocate a feral cat unless they are in danger of death. It's very dicey expecting them to live at a new home or in a new barn. The imprinting is important. It's three to four weeks of imprinting them. Our spay neuter assistance program started in 05 and every Tuesday we can help 20 to 23 cats get spayed and neutered. We drive them to the low cost spay neuter clinic in Auburn called Animal Spay Neuter. Different volunteers can pack their car with 20 cat carriers and then another volunteer brings them all back. And then either the community picks them up or they're field haven cats that will be adopted out. Um, and the exciting thing is we are about to open our own spay-neuter clinic and we'll have spay-neuter here on Thursdays. There's such a great need for more low-cost spay-neuter clinics. Everybody, almost, I'd say 90% of the public is on board to spay and neuter the feral cats and return them to where they came from. But we are finding that we need lots more low-cost spay-neuter clinics. So Field Haven gets to have one, yes! Haven Marketplace is one of our biggest revenue sources for Field Haven, for our operating funds. And it is a store in downtown Lincoln. It's a very large store, about three to 4,000 square feet. It's right smack in the middle of downtown Lincoln. And we have there a thrift store. We have vintage items, lots of great clothes, furniture. I mean, just a wide range of wonderful things and wonderful shopping. We have volunteers who refurbish jewelry, and that is one of our biggest sellers, and we're very well known for um, our jewelry at the marketplace. We also have their Champies Cafe, which is an adoption center set up like a coffee shop where you can come in and just have a cup of coffee or tea or bring your lunch in or bring your laptop and do some work and just sit there and enjoy the cats and maybe fall in love with one and adopt one. So Field Haven Marketplace is always looking for volunteers to help out there. We need donations of items to sell and of course we love it when you come in and shop. When you say classic cats and Cabernet, it is classic because it's all about the cats, the wine's really good, it's all about the cars, and it's all about the fun. I had heard about Classic Scouts and Cabernet, and it was the first year 
maybe a month away from auction and, and not much was in place, so I offered it to uh, help with that. We have been catering from 450 to 510 people for the last three years. We're getting people good food, hot food and pretty fast. The dessert bars we had last year, they were very good. Nice and rich so you didn't need a lot. We're having the same again this year. Good afternoon everyone and welcome to Classic Cats and Cabernet. Are we having a good time at Fieldhaven? My favorite part is seeing people during the live auction so excited. People jumping up and down to get people screaming. I think by that time people are filled with, with wine and filled with food and the evening is still young. They have a, a number of people that go around, they're dressed as cats and they go around to the different tables and you know, this is the last bid, no, this is the last bid, and so you see all this activity and excitement. It's, it's really interesting to see the people that come through the shelter. They're looking for kitties, they want to take the kitty home, and they're not too sure they're ready to. Everybody that I come across the whole day has a smile on their face and, and they're praising what we're giving them for the money. There's just so so much to see. There's the photo booth, there's popcorn, there's free ice cream to begin with during the day. And then, of course, is the display of vintage boats and cars. I'm a boat guy, so I love seeing the, uh, the collector boats, the old mahogany ones. My favorite part of being a sponsor is just uh, knowing that I'm helping out a very good organization. I just want to do everything I can to help out Field Haven. Everybody's happy, even though we're exhausted. Yeah, we did it. We pulled another one off. You need to come to CC and see. We provide a whole day for them, and they love it. They get to help the cats, and you get to help save cats. And especially those who have health issues, special needs cats and stuff like surgery or being sick, um, that it, they could, could support Fair Haven at the Awesome. We can be not funded by the state, it's all by sponsorship and donations. Well, it saves the, the county a ton of money to start with. Kitties mate when they're unbelievably young and they can have litters just on a, well not like rabbits, but nearly. So we're, we're cutting down on the number of feral kitties and kitties that um, accidentally get pregnant, those that don't too. Um, so I, I think it's that and uh, plus just the rewards of being a part of something that is so good. It's just that this is this is just a fabulous place, truly fabulous. They're supporting an organization that just isn't an intake of cats and an adoption of cats. We're extremely active in the community. We provide low-cost spay and neuter, we provide low-cost vaccinations and microchipping, all for community cats. And we also have a barn cat program. We um, instigate TNR, which is Trap New to Release. We are, at the moment, help rescuing cats from the Yuba Sutter area, where they've got very little help, but we're helping them. We've even started the vaccination clinics up there for the locals up there. They just don't have the um, facilities up there to help like we're helping in our area. So we're trying to share the love. Uh, we also do outreach education with schools and community groups like Scouts and Girl Guides. Um, and they contribute here too as a part of their education in those organisations. They come out and they do volunteer work. We also provide um, the ability for kids at school who have to do four hours of community service. We take them on as well. So we're sharing a whole lot of active help within the local community. You can do a monthly giving of a small amount through to a large amount, it's up to you. And we would really love to have some people volunteer. Um, the volunteers here are a family. We're one big caring family and I love the place.
Thank you. I would tell them um, because of the funding, we don't have anything, any funding from the county or state um, or the SPCA, anything like that, that all of this comes from the generosity of people that care about animals. And also, if, um, if they're frustrated with stray cats, just know that we're getting to the source of it and we can help people get to the source of it. It's to watch the kitties go out the door. That's it. I mean, they come in, people look, and they look, and they look, and then they walk in, and all of a sudden there's one little kitty that looks at them, and you can just hear it in that kitty's voice. Adopt me, adopt me, adopt me. And uh, that's the important, the really exciting part of it. Um, you get a little twing in your heart because when you get in that adoption room, you fall in love with every one of the kitties that are there, and you don't want any of them to leave, but they gotta leave. I'm still amazed at Field Haven and what they do and how it works, and uh, it's, it's, to me, it's a very, very exciting place to work at. I mean, it, every single kitty in here will touch my heart in one way or another. Uh, everybody gets along great, so I mean, it's one of the best places I've ever worked in my life. I'm very clear about why people should support Field Haven without a doubt. First of all, I think we have a lot of divine intervention here, or whatever one chooses to call it. The second reason is the people that are here are the most uh, courageous, biggest hearts, um, truly special people are attracted to Field Haven, and we have 200 plus of those type people that help. The third reason is, um, Joy, Joy Smith and our board of directors is extremely forward thinking and they make sure that the staff is trained appropriately and they make sure that we're always on the cutting edge of being uh, the best, they call it best practices type of shelter, meaning our shelter is always the most modern cutting edge guiding other shelters. And don't forget spay and neuter, spay and neuter. Spay and neuter your pets and your weird friends and relatives too.